Hi there booktube, it's Emma from Emma's Bookish Lifestyle and today I'm going to be doing a book tag and I was kindly um, nominated for this by Russell so I've got the questions written down here and uh, we shall go through them. Uh, first of all, the longest book on my shelf. Well, recent changes in my life and, and things that have happened have meant that uh, a couple of years ago I had to restart my life. Uh, not a problematic start, uh, restart, something that I think will be in my long-term benefit. However, it did mean that I downsized to quite a proportionally smaller uh, property that I'm renting so I don't have the same storage facilities and I don't have the same property size to be able to keep as many books as I would like. So unfortunately in the transition I did, horrible book confession, but I did have to donate 90% of them to the charity shop. Uh, just purely because I didn't know if I was going to be able to have any space at all when I first moved in. However, bearing that in mind, the longest book that I have on my shelf are actually books um, kindly given to me by my... Nanny Robertson and they are the old, very very old versions of Charles Dickens stories. I don't read them, uh, I look at them, they're old, they're very dear to my heart because they were my nans, uh, who's unfortunately no longer with us, but yes, I don't read those. Uh, I have read Charles Dickens but I don't read those versions, but they are one of the longest uh, books on my shelf. So last question two, last read, current read and what next? Well the last book I read was The Fatal Tree by Jake Arnott uh, which I'm going to be doing a review video on shortly. Um, really really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yes as I say book review coming shortly. I think I gave it four stars put that over to one side sorry for my arm crossing the screen current read well that was panty this was by um tilted access press uh it's a very slight book only 122 pages and has two stories in it again i'm going to be doing a review video on that so please look out for that shortly um Again, very, very good. I gave this five stars. It's translated fiction, which I was hoping to increase on this year, which is um, another good thing. And yes, so as I say, if you want to hear more about this particular book, I will be doing a book review shortly. And finally, what next? Well, it's April. And April means the start of my buddy read with Victoria of Eve's Alexandra. And this behemoth of a book, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. Now, you might be saying, why have you got tabs in it already? I am a little bit OCD. So at the very front, I've got a blue tab, which is character names. And then these three tabs here are to symbolise the goals that we have to complete over the month of April to complete this book in a one month buddy read. So... That's my next read. What did you hate that everyone else loved? Well, this is going to be a bit controversial, but it is something that I think I've mentioned previously, and that is Philip Pullman's uh, Northern Lights trilogy. Just didn't like it. Just didn't really... Just didn't click with it at all. I could understand the idea of Lyra and her sort of disconnected soul, and... That was about it. Yeah, I, I got to the end of that book and I thought, mm, it's just a bit meh. So, controversial, but a book that I hated that everyone else seems to love. And obviously there's, uh, you know, a another book coming out this year, which I know a lot of booktubers are looking forward to. Um, what book do you tell yourself you'll read but never will? I thought it was going to, I was going to say, and this is because the rules are honesty, answer all questions and tag four people. Um, my honest answer to this was War and Peace. I never ever thought I would read it. 
I really didn't ever think I would read it. However, I am reading it primarily because I think it might be somewhat easier to share the journey with somebody else rather than going solo and fighting my way through it. So I'm hoping that between myself and Victoria, if we get to any sticky bits or, you know, we're struggling to kind of get to grips with certain areas of it, we can talk it through and a second person's opinion may help me see something that maybe I've overlooked or mistaken, mistakenly misread. What books are you saving for retirement? Well, I'm not. I'm 42. <laughs> I'm closer to retirement than a hell of a lot of booktubers on here. Um, but I don't plan that far ahead. My plan is to just carry on enjoying reading as long as I physically and possibly can. Um, and if my eyesight goes, then I'm straight onto the audiobooks uh, to carry me out to the end of my days or large print books, um, but we're not quite there yet. Um, last page read first or leave to end? No, I don't care what anybody says. If you read the end first, you're ruining a good book. If you read the end and it's a bad book, then I suppose you get the upper hand and the last laugh. However, I just couldn't do it. It's just not me. I've never ever done it. I know friends that have done it and I can't understand it and I promise, make them promise upon death if they've read something that I know I want to read that they don't tell me the outcome of the story um, and so far that's worked. So no, definitely leave the end of the book to where it should be at the end. Acknowledgement wasted paper or you know, interesting insight. Well, it depends on the book. Um, sometimes the bibliographies are useful um, that I mentioned and sometimes the people that have helped create the book are uh, interesting, uh, especially if it's um, a new author who may have been inspired by other authors. However, to be brutally honest with you, I tend to have so many books to read that I do overlook the acknowledgements 95% of the time and that's brutally honest with you. Not that it's a waste of paper, just that I want to move on to my next story. Um, book character to swap places with. Mm, now, book character to swap places with, that's interesting. Um, I love a lot of historical fiction. I think it might be quite fun to be Dr. Watson. Um, but yeah, um, Dr. Watson I would say is one. Uh, the other I would say is um, Mary Boleyn uh, from The Other Boleyn Girl. Um, I think it might be quite interesting to be part of King Henry's court and to see uh, the underhandedness and the politics taking place and being part of a, an, a Tudor court and, yeah, trying some of the weird and wonderful foods they used to eat and probably give myself kidney and liver failure with all the alcohol and everything else that they used to consume, too much salt, too much sugar. Um... Number nine, do you have any books that remind you of something specific in your life? Uh, yes, I do. I have two. The first one is Stigger the Dump by, um, oh my gosh, Clive. I can't think of his surname. Apologies. I'll try and find it out and link the book down below. Uh, reminds me of when I first moved to Taverham in Norwich when I was... Uh, just seven. Um, actually, I think I was a little bit older. It might have been about nine. I'd been there a couple of years anyway, and I'd had to move up from first school to secondary school or middle school, depending on what you call it in your area. And at secondary school, he did a special assembly and everybody that attended the assembly in the school got a copy of the book, Stick of the Dump. And I absolutely, absolutely loved it. And it holds a special place in my heart from my from my childhood, at least. Um, 
along with a couple of other books but that's I think for another video but yeah that that's got um a link to a specific time in my life and the other book is Louisa May Alcott's um Little Women which I read uh when I was 18 and I had to have my tonsils removed which wasn't very pleasant and obviously quite late in my life they don't tend to leave it that late um to have your tonsils removed so that got me through and since then irrespective of the horrible way I was introduced to it by obviously being extremely ill in bed uh, I reread it quite regularly it's one of my all-time favorite classics um, name a book you acquired in an interesting way well I don't know if the way is interesting but the books are um, my Nanny Fry, or Nan Fry, um, on my mum's side, she gave me some books um, as she was moving from her family home into uh, sheltered accommodation. And they were beautiful. Um, some of them, they're all kids' books. They're all sort of kids' compendiums. And um, a couple of them are still in the brown boxes. Uh, one of them's quite damaged, but the other one is in a in a sealed brown box or a quite well maintained brown box. And on top of that is a label. Now, these books were produced by a newspaper in London, which no longer exists. And the label on the front is a label um, to show that it was sent by transit by train out of London uh, so yes so that's um, definitely a compendium of children's stories and they were sort of mainly um, fairy tales fables um, the usual um, sort of Grimm's fairy tales that kind of thing fairy stories and absolutely beautiful and as with the Charles Dickens books some of my most treasured possessions um, Number 11, have you ever given a book to a specific person for a specific reason? Uh, no, never. Um, and now I've said that and said no, never, I'm lying. <coughs> Sorry, so my honest answer is yes, I have given a book to someone for a specific reason, but not in a way that it was a book that I found amazing that I then gave on past the love on to someone else it was more in a sarcastic manner so my younger brother Dan he has um, quite a beardy beard um, those of you that are from the UK and around my age era maybe a bit older may remember a gentleman from our childhood called David Bellamy he's got a bit of a David Bellamy beard uh, drives my mum crazy she's always after him to shave it off a bit like she's always after me to cut my hair um, but we still love her we still love you mum although I don't think you watch YouTube um, but uh, they, I got him the graphic novel about the, the big friendly beard you know that turns nasty uh, so I got him that for Christmas so I suppose that would count as buying a book for a specific reason um, for a specific person but uh, not something that I necessarily have read number 12 what book has been with you to the most places Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare and A Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare those two books have been to so many places with me I've taken them to Florida to Portugal, to Yugoslavia, to uh, the south coast of England, to Cumbria, to Scotland, many many places and uh, definitely Midsummer Night's Dream more than Romeo and Juliet as the most read of the two but yeah th those are two of the ones that I've taken to the most places. Sorry I keep looking down it's because the questions are written down so question 13, any required reading at high school that wasn't so bad two years later? Um, again, Shakespeare, that would be Macbeth. Um, really struggled with it and struggled with a lot of Shakespeare and interpretation of Shakespeare, as I think a lot of people do. 
however whatever age they are um, and I did reapproach it when I was a bit older and could understand it a lot more um, don't ask me to explain it to someone else but up here it something clicked and it made sense um, used books or brand new well as you know if you are a regular viewer watching my channel I do both I get charity books from charity book hauls um, generally I try to aim for those that are in better condition than worse um, but you know if it's a title that I'm really interested in reading it, it really doesn't bother me I've not got um, like some people have a fear of sort of manhandled pages or or old books in any way but I also still love brand new books as you'll see from some videos that are going to be coming up lately um, there's a pile here of things that I'm going to be recording tonight to get caught up to date with um, so yeah a bit of both I would say probably 25% used, 75% new if I'm being brutally honest ever read a Dan Brown book uh, I would say yes um, and the reason why and I'm not ashamed is that when these books came out um, I was actually in my mid-twenties uh, I was commuting a lot into London and they were very sort of light easy reads for me to read on the commute backwards and forwards um, and also that was around the time that sort of obviously Harry Potter was coming out as well so uh, yeah um, I have read I think th two or three of his I haven't read any more since then but they were books that I read in my sort of early to mid 20s when I was commuting into London um, have you ever seen a movie that you thought was better than the book um, now there's a thought the book thief I actually thought was an extremely good movie stuck very close to the book um, gave a lot of atmosphere um, to the film that I didn't think would be relayed um, in the narration of, of death obviously um, yeah so I've really really enjoyed the movie I wouldn't say it was better than the book but I would say it was at least equal or on par with the author's original writings Question 17. Have you ever read a book that's made you hungry, cookbooks included? Uh, just trying to think. I sometimes get snackish. Does that count when I'm reading? Uh, I wouldn't say the book itself makes me hungry. Although, I have to say, if I go anywhere near a Jamie Oliver cookbook... Nine times out of ten, I end up down the local supermarket with a small shopping list uh, and going to cook myself something special for tea. So I would say wholeheartedly, and point the finger wholeheheartedly at Jamie Oliver's cook cookbooks. Uh, but in regard to sort of food, um, foodie writing, um, the only other book I can think of was Eat, Pray, Love, and uh, that really enticed me to get back into like a a rave of Italian food for a while so um, yeah I would say they were the two answers question 18 who is the person whose book advice you'll always take now I follow a lot of people now on booktube I've got a lot of respect for a lot of them and I've also subscribed to a couple of channels and um, personal subscription boxes so mercy at mercy's musings really really um value her advice she's um, definitely pointed me in the direction of some smaller um, publishers and some different authors that I never would have thought of finding uh, the big head bookworm because I love the fact that she does uh, thrillers and that kind of thing and that's Louise and then Janet at Swirly Girly Reads because um, both her and Eleanor from Eleanor Reads read very similar style books um, again a lot of them that I'm interested in uh, who else well there's they, there are two more which are that I can really really mention at the moment no four more sorry uh, Mel's Bookland Adventures 
I, I'm really fascinated by the series she did on German books, so I'm looking forward to the next one on that. I've added a couple of them to my TBR. Victoria from Eve's Alexandra, we're book buddies, and I am um, really appreciate hers and Mel's friendship of late. Um, they've really supported me, and yeah, I, I, I always watch every single one of her videos without fail. It never goes on a watch later. It's definitely one of the instant watches. And then Russell from Ink and, oh, sorry Russell, I can't remember his his channel name, In, Ink, and, Ink and Paper, I think it might be, apologies Russell if I've got that wrong, who um, recommended me for this tag. He uh, His channel is new but it's fantastic and I love his fur babies and I love what he has to say about books and Simon at Simon's um sorry Simon at Savage Reads who again just looks to be amazing uh, and spot on with his book reviews uh, a lot of the time I do take them on board occasionally I'll question mm, no nah, I think I might keep it on my TBR um, but as yet um, he hasn't steered me wrong and I've got quite a few purchases based on uh, his suggestions so yeah quite a lot of book advice there but nobody um in my personal life or close to me unfortunately no although my mum and dad both readers my mum tends to read animal literature um predominantly about cats my brother is a bit eclectic and my dad at the moment is either reading railway books um because he's interested in the great western railway or world war one books and i'm trying to entice him into some classics at the moment um is there a book, number 19 this is, is there a book out of your comfort zone you ended up loving? No. No. There, I've never actually come across a book that was out of my comfort zone that I ended up loving. Um, to be honest with you, maybe that's because I haven't challenged myself enough previously um, since starting to watch booktube in, in 2015 2016 and then having the courage to start this channel last year um i haven't really pushed that comfort zone as much this year i am starting to push the boundaries a bit more um so maybe i can answer that question at a later date so tagging people you need to tag four people so this is going to be interesting so i'd like to tag uh, Eleanor from Eleanor Reads, uh, Victoria from Eve's Alexandria, Mel from Mel's Bookland's Bookland Adventures, The Shades of Orange, which is Rachel, and Janet from Swirly Girly Reads. Uh, I can't remember if I said Louise from the Big Head Bookworm. Louise from the Big Head Bookworm. If you're watching this, I tag you. If I've tagged you twice. Oops, <laughs> you only need to do the one video. Uh, so that's five people. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And look forward to speaking to you soon, BookTube. Thanks, Russell, for the tag.